In this video, we'll do an exam review on hydrocephalus. 50% of the CSF is produced in the ependymal cells of the choroid plexus of the ventricles and 50% is produced by the blood vessels around the ventricles. So 50% by the ependymal cells and 50% is produced by the blood vessel around the ventricles. Normal CSF volume, it's 100 to 200 ml and the production rate is 20 ml per hour. So how does it passes from the ventricle? CSF exits from the fourth ventricle through the two foramen of Rishka and foramen of Magendi. Fourth ventricle has three foramen in it, cerebral of aqueduct, which connects it to the third ventricle. So the fluid formed from the lateral ventricle comes into the third ventricle through foramen of Monroe, and then from third ventricle through cerebral of aqueduct into the fourth ventricle, and then it goes into the subarachnoid space through foramen of Lishka laterally, they are two in number, and foramen of Magendi, which is one into the subarachnoid arachnoid space. Then the fluid circulates in the subarachnoid space and absorbs so what's hydrocephalus. Excess CSF in the ventricles and subarachnoid space is hydrocephalus. CSF production is equal to CSF absorption. An imbalance between the production and absorption causes hydrocephalus. Too much CSF causes brain damage, loss of function and even death. So hydrocephalus is due to an imbalance between the production and and absorption of the CSF and it causes brain damage, loss of function and even death. Hydrocephalus may be congenital or acquired. There are different types of hydrocephalus, communicating hydrocephalus, non-communicating, normal pressure hydrocephalus and hydrocephalus ex vaco. Now congenital hydrocephalus. Congenital hydrocephalus is non-communicating and it can be detected prenatally by ultrasound after 15 weeks of gestation. It may be due to genetic abnormalities, developmental disorders with defects in the brain and spinal cord like spina bifida and number three it may be due to infection during pregnancy. Example is rubella. So congenital hydrocephalus may be diagnosed prenatally after 15 weeks of gestation and the causes are genetic, developmental and infections during the pregnancy. Now clinical features in congenital hydrocephalus. Head size. Head size is large and increases rapidly. Fontanelles are bulging and tense, and scalp veins are prominent, and eyes have a sunset appearance. So, in congenital hydrocephalus, the head size is large and increases rapidly. Fontanelles are bulging and tense, scalp veins prominent, and eyes have sunset appearance. Brain damage causes mental retardation, seizure, progressive mental impairment, dementia, general slowing of movements, poor coordination and balance loss of bladder control and frequent urination. So the features of brain damage in congenital hydrocephalus are mental retardation, seizures, mental defects, dementia and incontinence. Now acquired hydrocephalus, communicating hydrocephalus. Number one, impaired CSF absorption at arachnoid granulation in scarring and tumors causes communicating hydrocephalus. Example is post meningitic arachnoid addition. Number two, increase CSF of production that occur in colloid plexus papilloma. So the causes of communicating hydrocephalus are impaired CSF absorption due to scarring as occur in post meningitic arachnoidal additions and number two it may be due to increased CSF production as occur in choroid plexus papilloma. Number two normal pressure hydrocephalus. Communicating hydrocephalus may also be a normal pressure hydrocephalus. CSF in this condition is not absorbed from the arachnoid granulation. 50% of the normal pressure hydrocephalus cases are due to idiopathic intermittent increase in intracranial pressure and remaining cases are due to meningitis, subarachnoid hemorrhage and atherosclerosis. So the normal pressure hydrocephalus most common cause is idiopathic intermittent increase in intracranial pressure and other causes are meningitis, subarachnoid hemorrhage and atherosclerosis. Now what are the clinical features of normal pressure hydrocephalus. There is a triad of symptoms. Mnemonics is A. A for ataxia, I for incontinence and D for dementia. Also there are dilated lateral ventricles with little or no cortical atrophy. This condition differentiates from the Alzheimer disease in which there is cortical atrophy. So in normal pressure hydrocephalus there is ataxia, incontinence, dementia, dilated ventricles and 
little or no cortical atrophy as opposed to Alzheimer's disease in which there is cortical atrophy and the pressure is of course normal in normal pressure hydrocephalus. There is delayed resorption of the CSF in the venous system due to meningeal scarring. So there is absorption defect in the normal pressure hydrocephalus due to meningeal scarring. How does it improve? There is transient gait improvement on withdrawal of 30 to 50 ml CSF. So transient gait improvement on CSF withdrawal occur in normal pressure hydrocephalus and 30 to 50 percent of patients with normal pressure hydrocephalus improve on ventricular shunting. Now hydrocephalic X vacao. In hydrocephalic vacao the CSF pressure is normal and there is increased CSF in the brain disorder. Different condition of the brain examples are Alzheimer's in brain atrophy, stroke, surgery and trauma. So in trauma, stroke and surgery normal pressure CSF and increase in CSF in different brain disorder. This is known as hydrocephalic X vacao. Now, non communicating hydrocephalic. Number one, obstruction to flow at narrow points, for example, at foramen of Monroe and the fourth ventricle, at a cerebral aqueduct, and in cerebral aqueduct strictures, there are dilated lateral and third ventricles, papilledema, vomiting, and headache, and there occur perinaut syndrome in cerebral aqueduct strictures, and there is upward gait paralysis. So, there is obstruction to flow at narrow points in non-communicating hydrocephalus. Examples are foramen of Monroe, fourth ventricle, cerebral of aqueduct stricture. Number two, colloid cysts and tumors. They obstruct and cause non-communicating hydrocephalus. Example is ependymoma and medulloblastoma. Number three, brain scarring. Example is tuberculous meningitis also causes non-communicating hydrocephalus. Another cause of non-communicating hydrocephalus is hydrocephalus is cystic sarcosis. Neurological feature of cystic sarcosis depends on the location of the cystic sarcoid. Cystic sarcosis causes hydrocephalus from the CSF flow obstruction due to chronic meningitis and arachnoiditis leading to papilledema and altered mental status. So cystic sarcosis also causes non-communicating hydrocephalus due to CSF flow obstruction due to chronic meningitis and arachnoiditis. In the investigation of lab findings of the neurological imaging in cystic sarcosis are cystic lesions with ring enhancement and calcified lesions can be seen in neuroimage. Treatment is removal of the cystic circus by endoscopic surgery or ventriculoperitoneal shunting. These are the surgical procedure, endoscopic surgery and ventriculoperitoneal shunting and the medical treatment is antiparasitic drug and glucocorticoid. Why they are used in cystic sarcosis? Because they reduce arachnoiditis and vascular cerebral edema and increase intracranial pressure. So the use of glucocorticoid in cystic sarcosis reduces arachnoiditis and vasculitis, reduces cerebral edema and decreases increase intracranial pressure.